everyone. Recently, when making videos about programming and web design, I received a lot of comments from everyone about creating videos related to working with 3D models in 3Js. And that's why we have this video. If you think this video will only help you know how to import and use basic 3Js, no. This video is more interesting than that. In this video, I will also guide everyone to create a 3D animation effect for the website when scrolling the page in a simple way. If everyone finds it interesting, don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel to follow many interesting videos about programming and web design. Thank you everyone and let's get started. The first thing is to find a model for the project. You can find it on Sketchfab. This is a place that contains a lot of diverse 3D models. In the search section, I will type B. Don't forget to click on the section that allows downloading and has animation effects. It will show a lot of results there are free models or not. I will choose this model. Click on the download section and choose the GLB version. After downloading, you will have a GLB file in your project. In addition, I've also prepared a landing page using HTML and CSS. My task in this video is to focus 100% on 3Js. I proceed to create a JavaScript file. Then import it into HTML with type module. Also, don't forget to create an element with ID as container 3D, whose task is to contain the 3D model on the screen. With this element, I will intentionally use position fix to fix it on the screen, with inset 0 meaning it will overlap the current device screen. To make sure it doesn't have any errors, I will try to give a red background to see if it is positioned correctly. Next, declare Z index to make sure it is not covered by other elements. Finally, add pointer events none to avoid it, hindering users from interacting with other content elements on the page. And that's the whole preparation process. Now let's move to the next stage in the JavaScript file. Of course, we will need to import the 3JS library. A complete 3D model will be created from two main components. The first is the camera. To set up the camera, the first value is the viewing angle. Increasing or decreasing the viewing angle will help us see more or less things. The second value is aspect. The default aspect value is the ratio of the frame that you want to contain the 3D model. In my case, I want it to be as large as the browser window. If the aspect does not match the frame size, the image will be distorted. The third value is near, used to determine the closest distance that the camera can see. Set 0.1% so that it can see things closest to the camera. And finally, far determines the farthest distance that the camera can see. Finally, the camera position. Normally, no one will use the default position as the camera position. Instead, we'll need to move the camera position away from the Z-axis a certain distance to be able to see the whole scene. And the second is the scene. The scene will contain all the things related to the 3D frame such as the model, the light. Next, I need to import the B model that we have downloaded to put into the project. To be able to read this file format, we will need to import the GLT floater library. Then proceed to use the load method to get the file information, with the first parameter being the path to the model file. In this load method, we have three callback functions. The first function will run when the model loading process is complete. The second function will continuously run during the loading process to help the user check the file loading progress. And finally, the error reporting function. This function will run if an error occurs during the model loading process. In case the file upload is successful, I will take all the data about the B model and put it into the scene. Because as I said from the beginning, the scene will contain all the data related to building the 3D model. So we have everything we need including the scene and the camera. The next task is to use this data to draw on the screen. Then we have the renderer. The task of the renderer is to create the canvas API tag in HTML and use it to draw on the screen. Surprise, right? The nature of 3Js is just using the HTML canvas to draw. We will need to set the size of the canvas. Here I will give it the same size as the browser window. And finally, we will put the canvas into the 3D container element that we created in HTML. Now let's see what the website is displaying. All we see is black. You can see inside the current 3D container element, there is a canvas tag inserted. And the reason the screen is black 
is because of the background color of the canvas. If you want to replace the black color with a transparent color, add alpha true here. So we have created a canvas on the screen. Next, we'll use the data from the scene and the camera to draw a 3D model on the canvas. However, nothing happened. So where is my B? This happens because when we use render to get the data of the scene to draw on the screen, at that time, the loading of the 3D model data is not complete. And of course, at that time, the B is not added to the scene. So when using the scene at that time to draw on the screen, there will be no B model. Fix this problem, instead of writing a render that runs only once here, create a function called rerender 3 d and paste that code here. Don't forget to call it immediately below to run this function. The difference is that in this function, I use request animation frame to continuously repeat this function. Thanks to that, if the first time the B is not loaded when rendering, then after the B is loaded, it can still render new data because the rerender 3 d function continuously repeats to get newer data. Some of you will think that this usage is quite similar to set interval in JavaScript. But in fact, request animation frame works much better, smoother, better performance. But why is the current model only black? That's because we don't have light yet. When working with 3D models, we will have two basic types of light. That is ambient light and directional light. When initializing, ambient light will include two values. The first is the color of the light. The second is the intensity. When using this light, the brightness will be divided evenly across the entire element, helping us to see its color. As for directional light, it is more special than ambient light because it has a direction, for example, the sun. It will have the coordinate position of the light source, thanks to which when it is lit, the model will have brighter spots and darker spots because of light being covered, thereby creating a more realistic feeling. Finally, based on this 3D coordinate rule, I will move the B's position to be more suitable. After loading the B model, I will change its initial default position. If the model's initial y-axis position is zero, I will reduce it so that it moves down. If this direct view is not what I want, I will also rotate the B along the y-axis so that it looks in a different direction. Back to the page where we loaded the model. It's clearly flying, not standing still. Look at this modal. It contains a bunch of different animations. And for each type of animation, it will move differently. So how do we get this animation? When the model is loaded, the animation information is already sent along. The problem is how to use it. To manage animation in 3Js, we have Mixer. When the model is loaded, I will also initialize Animation Mixer with the object that wants to create the main animation, which is the B. Now, my task is to find which animation has the same name as the animation that is creating this movement. And according to this list, the animation with the same name is at position 0. So I just declare the animation at position 0 as the main animation to move. Finally, use Ixer update with a time of 0.02 seconds. It has converted, but it does not create animation. This is simple because this upload method also needs to repeat continuously to update the new image. So I will also move it down to the re-render 3D function so that it can repeat continuously. When using, remember to add a condition to check if the mixer has been initialized before proceeding to update. So we have been able to get the default animation of the models. Similarly, you can try other default animations. Now let's come to a more interesting animation. I want to create a calculated movement when the user scrolls the page. Thanks to the fixed position attribute initialized from CSS, the B is now always following the screen. My job now is to determine which section the screen is in and then move it to the appropriate position. Please note that all the sessions in HTML, I have identified it with a separate ID. Now I will try to change the position of the B manually to find the right position. For example, in the banner, this is the position I want. I will temporarily save this information in Excel. The two things I will change are the position and rotation. Next is the position of the intro. I will move it to the right by increasing the x-axis position and change the z position to make it smaller. At the same time, I will also change the rotation angles so that it is facing the left. After finding a satisfactory position, I will continue to put these values into Excel for temporary memory. Just like that until I complete this process. 
At the end, I will have the complete change positions. Based on this data, I will create an array containing information about the transitions. Each object will represent a section. Each section will be identified by a unique ID, which is also the ID of that section in HTML. Below will include information related to positing and rotation. Likewise, I will fill in the rest of the content. Once we have enough data, we proceed to capture the user scroll event. For this task, we only perform it if the B model has been loaded. At this point, I will process the information inside the move model function. Initialize the function. Everyone notice that all these sections are declared by me in the same class called section with each separate ID. So first that will get the entire section list using query select raw. For each section, I use get bounding client track to get its current position information. If its current distance is less than one third of the screen height, then I take the height of that section as the current position. Now I will display the active item to test it. As you can see, when the section with ID intro reaches this position, it is activated. If the ID is already active, I just need to use the find index function to find its corresponding position in the position model array. With the condition that its ID will match the ID of the element inside this array. If the found position is greater than or equal to zero, it means we have found it in the original array. At this time, the new coordinate is equal to the object that the position just found. Finally, we just need to change the B's position R to the new value we just found. Now, let's try scrolling the page. It is transition, however, it is shifted immediately instead of moving smoothly. The easiest way to solve this problem is to use GSAP. First, we will need to import it here. Now, instead of changing the position values of the B directly, I will put it in the to method of GSAP. In addition, we have an additional duration property to declare the animation duration. And ease is the animation type. Here I choose it to initially transition quickly then gradually slow down. Now let's try again. The position movement problem has become smooth. Similar to position, I will also use GSAP to change the rotation value of the B. Also because the B's position is already set completely in this function. So instead of having to temporarily set the values when the model is loaded, I will call the model move function right here. Let's try again. Everything is perfect. The B's transformation is exactly as I intended from the beginning. But there is still a problem here. That is when the screen sizes change. The B's position is no longer correct and gradually disappears from the screen. That's because we haven't made it responsive yet. First, we need to catch the event when the screen size is changed. At this point, we will have to set the canvas size to the size of the current browser screen. As you can see, our B is no longer falling off the screen, but is distorted because the aspect ratio in the camera is no longer correct. So we also have to reset the aspect according to the current screen size. And we have to call update projection matrix for it to take effect. And that's it. Now when the screen is zoomed in or out, our 3D model will change accordingly so it doesn't break. And that's the last content in this video. I really hope it will be useful. In the project, I tried to make it as simple as possible so that beginners can access it. If you have any questions in the video, don't hesitate to leave a comment and I will answer. And if you find it interesting,
Don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel to continuously update interesting videos about programming and web design. Thank you for watching until the end. See you all in the next video.